Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're dealing with a few issues that keep popping up age after age through reflection and examination of the scriptures. This time, what does the Bible say about prejudice? Prejudice is the act of judging a person based on their identity or group affiliation alone, rather than based on their actions, history, or behavior. In short, to judge someone before you know them, to pre-judge. Just as there are many kinds of group affiliations and identities, so there are many types of prejudice, and the Bible has a lot to say about them. However, on this issue, it's important not to read things into the text that aren't there. Some kinds of judgments might be acceptable and not others, depending on the types of things being judged. For there shall come into your assembly a man having a golden ring, in fine apparel, and there shall come in also a poor man in mean attire, and you have respect to him that is clothed with the fine apparel, and shall say to him, Sit thou here well, but say to the poor man, Stand thou there, or sit under my footstool. Do you not judge within yourselves, and are become judges of unjust thoughts? James 2, 2-4 two It's actually unjust to be any more respectful to a rich man than to a poor one on the basis of his wealth. This is the first type of person we should never treat with prejudice, the poor. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge just judgment. John 7.24 This is an important verse because it says that we should judge people, but not according to their appearance. This means all kinds of physical appearances, different races, differently shaped facial features, heights, weights, deformities, none of these things should matter to a follower of Christ, nor should we assume a person is sinful on the basis of any of them. Instead, we should be fair and just in our judgments. Now, some people say we shouldn't judge at all, since the Bible also says, Judge not, that you may not be judged. Matthew 7, 1 However, this verse has a larger context which needs to be taken into consideration. For with the judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why seest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, and seest not the beam that is in thy own eye? Matthew 7, 2-3 The specific type of judgment being described here is a type of critical condemnation of someone on the basis of their sins. The talk of motes and beams refers to sins or weaknesses that people have in pursuit of holiness. Jesus is saying that we should be ready to forgive people for flaws and sins in the same way that we want God to forgive us for ours. He's not saying that we should be unwilling to recognize sins that have been committed, nor is he telling us to ignore it when someone wants to do us harm, or is trying to prevent people from living faithfully. There's a difference between a judgment that's a condemnation and one that's only an evaluation. Matthew 7 instructs people not to condemn, but it doesn't instruct them not to evaluate. That's why we can make just judgments. Here's one pretty stark example of the difference. For there are also many disobedient, vain talkers and seducers, especially they who are of the circumcision, who must be reproved, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. Titus 1, 10-11 Here St. Paul levels several accusations against the people of Crete, and there are more to follow. However, he doesn't condemn them for this. Instead, he gives Titus instructions on how to treat them. Wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. Titus 1, 13b He tells Titus that he should scold these people to try to convince them to return to a life of authentic faithfulness to the will of God. This is the kind of judgment that is Christian, a judgment that encourages faithfulness to God and doesn't waste time on other differences, as St. Paul says elsewhere. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3.28 Where there is neither Gentile nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian nor Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Colossians 3.11 not that these differences don't exist, but that for Christians, dealing with fellow Christians who are trying to live faithfully, none of them should make any big difference. We should be able to look at people of other races, classes, genders, and levels of education, and not focus on those things when evaluating them. 
These sorts of things can make an emotional difference to some people, but we shouldn't let them influence our judgments. What really matters is that we remain part of the body of Christ, his church. This is what makes us brothers and sisters in Christ, and in that respect, there's no reason for seeing other members of that body as less than ourselves. None of us are perfect, but as long as we're honestly trying to follow the path set out for us by Jesus, all of us are travelers on the same road. In the end, one choice matters far more than any other. Do we choose to try to follow Jesus or not? Next, what does the Bible have to say about territory and property? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.